Hi. Hi, this is Quinlan. I'm testing. Mm. Hi. Hi. Hopefully this is the last test. I'm hoping this is the last test. Hi, this is Quinlan, and today I am in Tono, one of my favorite places in North Japan. Tono is often called the land of folklore. The name Tono, if you look at the kanji, literally translates to something like faraway wilderness. But these days it's not so far away, especially if you live in Morioka. When you say Tono, a lot of people think about kappa or um, folk tales. Tono is called the land of folklore, the hometown of folklore, for a number of reasons. One of these reasons is that a famous folklorist, Kunio Yanagita, came here and published around 1910 a book called The Tales of Tono, the Tono Monogatari. That book was a collection of stories that he got from local people around then of all of the myths and legends and folk tales of this area. So in this video, I want to introduce Tono as well as show you a few of my favorite spots, uh, tell you a few stories, and maybe tell you a little bit of the history of this interesting village in central Iwate. Tono has been inhabited for more than 10,000 years. The Jomon peoples lived here in prehistoric times, and there are hundreds of sites throughout the city where uh, pottery fragments, statuettes, and other artifacts from the Jomon peoples have been discovered here. The Emishi also lived here. Emishi are less famous than Jomon, but to me, even more fascinating. They were a collection of tribal groups, most likely, that have been nearly completely annihilated by the Yamato Empire as they pushed northward starting around 1200 years ago. They were completely um, absorbed into the peoples to the point where we don't even know if they had a unique language or if they just spoke a heavily accented version of what the people in the Yamato area spoke. But the current Tono that we know now is a Tono that dates more from after this became a domain of the central Japanese government. This was known as the Mutsu province um, throughout most of the Middle Ages. People still discover arrowheads and all sorts of other uh, remnants of the battles hundreds of years ago fought on this land. But that's all ancient history. Tono is well known for something called Magaria, and in fact I'm standing in a Magaria right now. This is an L-shaped farmhouse which the horses, which were so important to the local peoples, lived under the same roof as the residents, the human residents. And these farmhouses featured two parts, one that had a nice wooden and a tatami mat flooring, and another that was a dirt floor where the horses stayed. Now these horses were so important to people during the Middle Ages that they would actually boil their hay. They cooked for them and fed them boiled hay, which they enjoyed and uh, perhaps it had some health benefits, I would assume. Right now I'm in a place called Tono Furusato Muro. Um, which is a tourist attraction, but a pretty cool one, where a number of these Magaria traditional farmhouses took them apart piece by piece and then rebuilt them here and created this little village of farmhouses. And so while you're in the middle of this, there's no power lines, there's no signs of modern civilization anywhere. It's a really neat place. It's a great place to visit, 550 yen, about $5 uh, to get in. And I just wanted to show you a few of my favorite uh, areas of this. It's a pretty neat place. Let's take a look. You can see how the family while in their house, could easily just look out the window and see how the horse is doing. This is a shrine to the divinity Konsei-sama. This is the body itself of Konsei-sama. 
Of course, Japan has a long history of uh, fertility um, deities, and um, there have been problems throughout the years um, with uh, involving children and childbirth. And so, um, Konsei Sama is both a god for um, safe childbirth as well as um, for fertility, and can be also associated with the harvest as well. And um, there's a lot of places throughout Japan, not just in this northern area, where they worship uh, this divinity. The Tono Furusatomura has all kinds of neat uh, little implements, like this old fire engine. Uh, and you can see things like the traditional kanjiki, or the old school snowshoes that they would use in Japan. There's a number of old farming implements on display. It's like visiting one of my uncle's houses. <laughs> I have uncles in the Wisconsin who have this sort of stuff sitting around their sheds. Look at this. Even the bathrooms have a thatched roof house. This is the public restrooms here, as you can see. And it's a beautiful thatched roof old style building. Oh, look at this. There's a pony. Hey there, buddy. How you doing? Kind of cold? You'll notice that with this pair of divinities, on the altar there. One has the head of a horse and the other the head of a woman. Now this relates to perhaps the most famous tale or legend of Tono. There was a poor old farmer who lived with his daughter. They had one horse. Now the daughter fell in love with that horse, according to legend, and it is said that they became husband and wife. However, inevitably, her father found out, and he was just furious. He was beside himself with rage at this. This could not be. This was not going to happen. And so he took the horse out and he hung it from a mulberry tree behind their farm, killing it. Now, when his daughter came upon this that night, she was overcome with sadness and she threw her arms around the horse's body, still hanging from that mulberry tree, and would not be separated from it. She wept and wept and clung to it. In a fit of rage, the father then chopped the head off of the horse. She then clung to it with renewed love and uh, desperation, and the horse opened its eyes, came alive, and took flight. The severed head of the horse with the farmer's daughter clinging to it, rose into the night sky and disappeared into the heavens. With the poor father staring aghast, bloody axe in one hand, staring up in shock and horror at his disappearing daughter as she vanished into the night. Since then, uh, it's become a legend locally, and many houses in Tono to this day still have on their family altars Oshirasama, these divinities which are said to be messengers of the gods. A local folklorist told me that it's possible that the horse was basically a stand-in for a young stable hand, and perhaps the farmer had a young stable hand, some boy helping with the farm, but he was of a lower caste. And when the daughter fell in love and married him, that he was driven out or maybe even murdered by the father. But that uh, it was a caste difference. Perhaps even if they were farmers, they were of a lineage that didn't allow for her to be cavorting with a uh, base-born stable boy. Japan too had, of course, a caste system of sorts in the feudal period. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in stories like this and I can tell more. Let me take a quick moment before we get too far to say, um, if you're a subscriber, please make sure you click the notifications, that little bell next to the subscribe button so you know when I release a video, because otherwise there's not really any way to find out. Uh, if you're an Instagram person, follow me on Instagram. I'm Quinlan. Uh, if you're on Twitter, I'm J on Twitter. Thanks. Tono is just full of secrets. The more you explore it, the more you find. You could spend a whole day exploring any number of them. And so I can only 
sort of scratch the surface here. Um, but I hope this little exploration has made you want to investigate to come check out Tono, explore it for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the trails.